Hi, so we're going to start talking about some new techniques for counting that are going to be very useful. Um, so let's start with an example. See, the question is, in how many different ways can five people sit in five chairs? So what this is asking uh, is, I don't have to draw chairs. The whole point is that I have five spots. It's the same logic like when we were doing um, past examples of passwords. But the problem here. Uh, is that there's only five um, people to occupy those spots and one person is not going to occupy two spots, right? So it's like, you can imagine it like if you have five people, Anna, Betty, Carlos, Daniel, and Edgar, so f five letters, and you're going you're gonna to fill these spots with five letters. So this is like making a password with five letters and not repeating the letters. So we did similar examples like that. Uh, in, in the past example, so I'm going to use here for the first sp spot, it could use any of the letters, so I have five options. For the next one, I have any of the letters, so it's a four, sorry, any of the letters except the one that was used, right? So if I use, for example, if I use um, E for this one, then I have only four options for the next one, for the next options, right? So then uh, I have to de decrease by one each time, so I have three here times two times one. So you multiply those numbers and you get uh, 20 times six, so 120. So there's 120 ways uh, this could be, this could happen. 100 different ways five people can sit in five chairs. Now I change the question to extend it if there's 36 uh, students, which is more typical maybe of a full classroom in some colleges. So maybe I'm gonna write, well, this is gonna be the same idea, right? I'm gonna write 30, I'm gonna have like 36 spots, have 35 for the first spot, sorry, 36, 35 for the second spot, and so on. So I'm gonna keep doing this until I get times two times one. So I have 36 um, chairs, and I have to multiply all numbers between 36 and one, all integer numbers between 36 and one. So it's gonna be a very big number, and um, it'll take me a while to type this in the calculator. So there's gonna be a short, this is, this is used a lot, and this is called a factorial, so this, this is going to be a shortcut or a short notation for this. So um, this uh, symbol that we use as an exclamation mark in math is going to be called a factorial. So it's going to be, um, uh, for, for n greater than 1 is what I just said, so it's multiply all numbers between n, n minus 1, n minus 2, other way you can make it to 1. You could stop at the 2 of course because times 1 doesn't make any difference, but just for completion, we say it define it all numbers between one and n. Um, and then we define one factorial to be one, just because sometimes we're gonna use it and and if we just if we say all numbers multiply between one, between the number n and one, then the one is a special case, so we define it separately. And an even more special case is zero. So zero factorial um, is a special case that makes no sense probably with this definition, but we need to include uh, what is zero factorial, and it's going to be one as well. This is going to make our formulas uh, work and, and make sense, and be able to write things and simplify and things like that. Uh, so zero factorial is one, n equals one factorial is one, and for numbers greater than one, n factorial is you multiply all numbers between one and n. Now our calculators have a number for that, have a, a button for that, sorry. So I'm going to show these with a, the online calculator called class calc. I have it open here. Um, so I go to classcalc, classcalc.com, and um, so it looks very similar to Desmos if you have seen that in the past. I'm going to move my bubble to the side so you can see that I have to be here uh, in the graphing calculator. If you go to the scientific calculator, you're not going to see the buttons that I want for stats. Oh no, they are. They are here. I'm going to use the NP, the, the factorial, sorry. Yeah, but we're going to use um, a later, the more advanced feature, so let's get used to the graphing feature. We're not going to graph for statistics, but um, not necessarily, but we're going to need more of the stats advanced. So if, if I'm on this window, I click on the stat button and the factorial is right there, right? So I can type uh, the question that I wanted to find before was 36 factorial. So I wonder if I can just type the exclamation mark, and I can. So you don't have to dig in to find the exclamation mark, you can just type 36 factorial right there. So it's a big number. Right, it's 3.7 times one. 
two, some seven, sorry, 3.72 times 10 to the 41. So it's a huge, huge number. Um, so it gets very big. So I was right there. Okay, so let's do um, another similar, sim, similar or, or easy example is um, many of us are familiar with a Sudoku. A Sudoku is a three by three. If you're not familiar with it, it's not a big deal. I just want to say that it's a three by three, um, uh, a nine by nine. Sorry, but but each 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 it's it split into these tiny boxes. And each one of these, uh, oops, one extra one right there. Each one of these is has to be all numbers between one and nine occupied once in each of these uh, little tiny squares. And but also um, in each row, every number between one and nine has to be occupied. Yeah, and not repeated. So I'm not going to count how many possible Sudokus are there in total. That would be a complicated question. Uh, for today, but I'm going to say how many ways can you fill the first row, this first row of the Sudoku. So I just said you know you're going to fill it has to be filled with any, all numbers between one and nine have to show up exactly once. So it is exactly nine factorial, right? You're going to have uh, nine for the first spot, then eight for the next spot, and so on. Uh, so it's just 9 factorial. So how much is 9 factorial? Let's have an idea. Let's go to our calculator and I can just type here um, 9 and I just put the exclamation mark. So 362,880. So this is 362,880 I believe that was. Yep. Okay, so we get our, we got our example. Um, let me do uh, keep continue with this idea. Now I'm going to say three students from each section of a stats course are going to be selected to work in the three campus-wide projects. The first student will work on a project on textbook prices, the second one in the commute project, and the third one in the technology project. How many different selections of students are possible in a classroom with 26 students? So I'm not selecting all the students from 26, so it's not 26 factorial. I'm only selecting three, right? So I can... Uh, one approach to look at this one is the same as I've been doing. I have three spots to fill. Uh, there are different spots because the first one uh, is going to be uh, the person working on the textbook project, textbook prices. The second one on the commute. And the third one on technology. I'll put it on tech. Right. So um, I'm going to select one person from the 26. That means I have 26 options for my first person. Right. But when that person is selected, uh, I'm going to select another person for the other for the for the commute project. So I only have 25, and then I'm going to have only 24, right? For the, for the technology, so, so it's like filling three spots. Um, again, if you had the 26 letters of the alphabet and you only had 26 uh, 26 students with different initials, and all you care is the first letter, then you've created really just a, a three-letter word, right? How many three-letter words can you make if any order matters? Uh, that's why it, it, it is a word. So this is just 26 and 25 and 24. Uh, it's not a factorial if I see it this way. So let me just type uh, here. I'm going to find out what that is. Of course, 26. I can do the times with the little, uh, sorry, yeah, with the little asterisk button on the calculator. If you don't want to scroll, the keyboard got hidden, but if you click in here, you get the keyboard for the multiplication. But if I don't want to use that uh, button here, you can just get it by doing um, the asterisk in the computer keyboard, which in, so 26 times 25 times 24. So 15,600. Okay, so that's how many uh, committees I have. Okay. So now what if I change the question? It's the same question, but now 35 students. Well. I think we're a little bit of an expert now. We know, well, this is going to be the same thing. I have three spots. The first one it could be of 35 options, the next one of 34, the next one of 33, right? So 35 times 44 times 33, you want to multiply those numbers. Let's do it very quick here. So I'm going to find here, uh, let me move my bubble to the side, put myself over here. So now it is uh, 35, oops, I'm in the wrong place. 
35 times 34 times 33. So 39 to 7. 39,207. Okay, so now, um, same question, but now I just put an N here. Like, I want to find, can I solve this problem all the time? Well, I guess, yeah, right? I'm going to put N for the first uh, spot. Then it went down to N minus 1 for the second spot. And N minus 2 for the third spot. So I'm always going to multiply three consecutive numbers for this problem. N times N minus 1 times N minus 2. Um, so that that is fine. This is what we, we want to find. Um, but I, what I want to get, this is called a permutation. And uh, so the permutation is an uh, arrangement of R objects uh, chosen from a group of N. So in my example, my R here was um, 3, and I'm being chosen from uh, 35. Yeah, so here is 35. I'm picking three students, so it would be 35P3. This would be 26P3. So the notation, I, I'll go back to it, but this would be uh, 26P3 is going to be this number. This is going to be 35P3. P is for permutation, of course, and this is uh, NP3. So um, I would like to have a formula for any N and any R. So far I did it for the N and R is 3, so I know what to do, but how do I do it for any R? So the trick here is to um, make things a little bit more complicated in, the, in, the, in this notation, but it's going to allow us to use a factorial to make it simple. Uh, so the trick I'm going to do here is, well, I'm multiplying n times n minus 1 times n minus 2. That's like the start of n factorial. So if I multiply, if I continue, and I multiply by all numbers, that's a 3, sorry, n minus 3. Um, let me write it again. And if I continue that way until I get to 2 and to 1, uh, I get n factorial in the numerator, but of course that's not the same that I had before, unless I divide by the same quantity, right? If I multiply and divide by the same quantity, I'm not affecting at all. That, that What it is in red is a 1, right? Number and denominator are equal. But this allows me to say, oh, in the numerator, I'm multiplying all numbers between 1 and n. We have a way to call that. That's n factorial. In the denominator, I'm multiplying all numbers between 1 and n minus 3. So that is n minus 3 factorial. So that's how we're going to write this in a in, in compact way. It's going to be n factorial divided by n minus 3 factorial. So this is not very useful for computations because it's, I mean, I mean I'm mean i not going to multiply all numbers between 1 and, and n and then divide if I'm going to simplify it later. But it's a way to keep track of, of, of what operation we do and it's more compact. Right, it allows me to have a formula. Because now if I want to have a formula for R, um, it's going to be what I just wrote, right? NPR is going to be N factorial divided by N minus R factorial. So this is a formula for NPR. For the, so just uh, to be clear, the N objects are different, right? There were people in my examples. Uh, once one person was used, we cannot be repeated. And the order was important, right? There were three different committees um, in my examples or, or different chairs uh, where they were going to sit down. Okay, I'm going to stop this one, be there right there.